चैप्टर नंबर इलेवन द नेशनलिस्ट मूवमेंट वी आर ऑन पेज नंबर टू जीरो फाइव दैट इज द सेकेंड पैराग्राफ द व्यूज ऑफ कोर्स अनसाइंटिफिक एंड विदाउट एनी बेसिस इन रियालिटी इवन दो हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम्स फॉलो डिफरेंट रिलीजन्स देर इकोनॉमिक एंड पोलिटिकल इंटरेस्ट वर नॉट डिफरेंट फॉर दैट रीजन हिंदूज वर डिवाइडेड फ्रॉम फेलो हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम्स फ्रॉम फेलो मुस्लिम्स by language culture caste class social status food and dress habits social practices and so on even socially and culturally the hindu and the muslim masses all well as classes had developed common ways of life a bengali muslim and a bengali hindu had much more in common than a bengali muslim and a punjabi muslim had how moreover hindus and muslims were being equally and jointly oppressed and exploited by british imperialism even sayyed ahmed khan had said in 1884 do you not inhabit the same land are you not burned and buried on the same soil do you not tread the same ground and live upon the same soil remember that the words of hindu and mohammedan are only meant for religious distinction otherwise all persons whether hindu or mohammedan even the christians who reside in the country are in particular respect belonging to one and the same nation when all these different sects can be described as one nation they must each and all unite for good of the country which is common to all the question then arises how could communal and separatist trend of thinking grow among the muslims this was to some extent due to the relative backwardness of the muslims in education and in trade and industry muslim upper classes consisted mostly of zamindars and aristocrats because the upper class muslims during the first 70 years of 19th century were very anti british conservative and hostile to modern education the number of educated muslims in the country remained very small consequently modern western thought with its emphasis on science democracy and nationalism did not spread among muslim intellectuals who remained traditional and backward later as a result of the efforts of sayyed ahmed khan nawab abdul latif and baduriddin tayyib ji and other modern education spread among the muslims but the proportion of the educated was far lower among muslims than among hindus parsis and christians similarly the muslims had also taken little part in the growth of trade and industry the small number of educated persons and men of trade and industry among the muslims made it possible for the reactionary big landlords to maintain their influence over the muslim masses as we have seen earlier landlords and zamindars whether hindu or muslim supported the british rule out of self interest but among the hindus the modern intellectuals and the rising communal and industrialist class had pushed out the landlords from leadership unfortunately the opposite remained the case with the muslims the educational backwardness of the muslims had another harmful consequence since modern education was essential for entry into government service or the professions the muslims had also lagged behind non muslims in this respect moreover the government had consciously discriminated against the muslims after 1858 holding holding them largely responsible for the revolt of 1857 when modern education did spread among the muslims the educated muslims found few opportunities in business or the professions he inevitably looked for government employment and in any case india being a backward colony there were very few opportunities of employment for its people in these circumstances it was easy for the british officials and the loyalist muslim leaders to incite the educated muslims against the educated hindus sayyed ahmed khan and others raised the demand for special treatment for the muslims in the matter of government service 
they declared that the, if the educated muslims remained loyal to the british the latter would reward them with government jobs and other special favors some loyalist hindus and parsis too tried to argue in this manner but they remained a small minority the result was that while in the country as a whole independent and nationalist lawyers journalists students merchants and industrialists were becoming political leaders among the muslim loyalist landlords and retired government servants still influenced political opinion bombay was the only province where the muslims had taken to commerce and education quite early and there the national congress included in its rank such brilliant muslims as badruddin tayyab ji r m saini a bhim ji and a young barrister mohammad ali jinnah we can sum up this aspect of the problem with the quotation from jawaharlal nehru's the discovery of india there has been a difference of the generation or more in the development of hindu and muslim middle classes and that difference continues to show itself in many directions political economic and other it is this lag which produces a psychology of fear among muslims thank you everyone for tuning in in the next part we are going to start with the the next paragraph that starts with as students of history we should also know this paragraph will start from page number 206 and uh, we are still continuing with chapter number 11 thank you everyone for tuning in do subscribe and share and like the channel all the best for exams thank you